The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Old Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. Buenos días, señor padre. Any of the folks at home? Sí, padrecito. Luke is inside. Be all right if I go in? Oh, yes, of course, señor padre. Oh, that damn blame God. <laughs> oh. oh, good morning, Reverend. Good morning, Luke. I'm sorry about the cussing. When I hit mine, it's a real problem. All I can do is sit and stare holes through the curtains. <laughs> oh. Luke, would you like me to? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, that's all right, Helga. Uh, Reverend, this is Helga. She's helping out while Kate's away. Glad to meet you. Thank you, sir. Could I bring you some coffee? That would be fine. Oh, thanks a lot, Helga. Yeah, well, sit down, Reverend. Thank you. I wanted to call earlier, but being new here, I, things have kept me pretty busy. Oh, yeah, well, we're sure mighty pleased. Yeah, Grandpa was saying just this morning how anxious he is to show you around the place. Well, what's he snooping around here for? <laughs> well, it could be just a social visit. Oh, I ain't never heard of a reverend coming on a social visit so far away from mealtime. <laughs> by the way, Luke, among the church records turned over to me by the Reverend Fisher was a pledge from your grandfather in a fundraising campaign. Yeah. Pledge from Grandpa? Twenty-five dollars. He's probably forgotten all about it. It's a twenty-five dollar pledge. Twenty-five dollars? <laughs> Just happened to get a good price for apples that year and I lost my head. <laughs> Ain't been able to stand the taste of apples since. <laughs> I hope Luke can handle the situation. Oh, don't worry, Senor Grandpa. Luke will do the right and honorable thing. Yeah. It's always been one of the boys' faults. <laughs> Well, good morning, Reverend. Good morning, Mr. McCoy. You know, it's mighty nice of you to come a-call on us like this. <laughs> like the good book says, he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he, Proverbs 21. <laughs> uh, Grandpa, the Reverend said he was looking over the books. Hey, Luke, uh, uh, would you just keep an eye out for my prayer book, because we ain't never going to have enough money to buy another. But, <laughs> Grandpa... Uh, say, uh, has that letter from the mortgage company come here yet? Well, no, the mail ain't come. Uh, well, uh, no matter. Uh, when it does come, just uh, pile it up there on that heap of unpaid uh, uh, feed bills. <laughs> just sit up there, Reverend. Here you are. Oh, you just set it down there, Helga. Well, I hope the coffee's good. But trying to stretch the same ground seven or eight days, it's, it's liable to get a little thin toward the end of the week. But I just made it fresh. Thank you, Helga. <laughs> I'll take mine straight, see this how that's the last of the sugar loop. <laughs> Being practical, penniless don't bother us none. After all, blessed is the poor, Matthew 5. You seem to know your Bible. Why, it is the most important thing we got. And we're going to hang on to it, too. Hang on to it till the last. Even after the furniture goes. <laughs> now, look, Grandpa. Luke, now maybe the Reverend would like something to go with his coffee. Well, no, the Reverend come. We might be poor, but... We're still willing to share our few remaining morsels. <laughs> Excuse me, Reverend. Um, Mr. McCoy, I called to see you about your $25 pledge. Oh, that. Well, Reverend, the time I made the pledge was... I had more religion than I had money. <laughs> Church can't function without support and and help. Oh, help, help. Now, now there's something I can handle. Maybe I could paint some of them rooms in the church. You know, a man can serve the Lord with a paintbrush, too. <laughs> yes. Blessed is he who considereth the poor. 
Psalms 41. <laughs> you really have an extraordinary knowledge of the Bible. Yes, I sure have. You, well, my pappy, he learned me all the Bible stories he is. Oh, I know him fronters and backers. How fortunate. It just so happens we need a new Sunday school teacher. <laughs> huh? Mrs. Judson conducted the class for six months, but the children were getting more and more unruly, so I promised to find her a replacement. Do you think you could teach a Sunday school class? Well, now, yeah, I guess I could teach him, but I think there's other things that would be more uh, uh, advantage to you. Teaching a Sunday school class might just take the place of your $25 pledge. <laughs> Blessed is him who knoweth when he's well off. <laughs> I'll start Sunday. Good day, Mr. Nicole. Gee, it sure is great you teach in Sunday school, Grandpa. Well, uh, thank you, little Lou. Thank you. Yeah, at least we won't have to listen to that Mrs. Judson anymore. Now, now. Maybe when she was a kid, her pappy didn't learn her like my pappy learned me, you see. <laughs> well, I guess not. Say, Grandpa, maybe you could help me with my homework. From Sunday school? Yep. Ten questions every week. Uh, all right, little Luke. Swell. I'll get my book. He sets his head right down there. Okay. Uh, what kind of questions, little Luke? Well, this week it's on Solomon. Oh, Solomon. Oh, yeah. He was a fellow so all fired smart and had all them wives. <laughs> you know, I never could figure uh, how the two went together. <laughs> all right, little Luke. Fire away. This is right up my alley. Okay. When Solomon built his mighty temple, how many ewers of stone worked on it? Huey who? Ewers. <laughs> stone cutters. Oh, stone cutters. Why didn't you say that? <laughs> well, what should I put down for an answer? Well, I'll tell you, Luke, just for the fun of it, you take that question, I'll take the next one. Okay. <laughs> to help build the temple, King Hiram of Lebanon sent cedar and fir trees. That's absolute right. Cedar and fir trees. The trees were floated by sea to Joppa and then carried overland to Jerusalem. Right again. Yes, sir. <laughs> From Joppa to Jerusalem. He carried every step of the way. Boy, you sure know your Bible, Grandpa. Like a book. <laughs> now, here's the question. How far is it from Joppa to Jerusalem? How far did you say? Well, what should I put down? Well, now, little Luke, about them questions, is these the same kind of things the teacher asks you every week? Nope. Usually, they're a lot tougher. Tougher? <laughs> well, I should think so. Well, what shall I put down? Uh, well, little Luke, you know, I've been thinking, I should not have been giving you all the answers to these questions unless I give them to the other kids, too. <laughs> well... You wouldn't want to be called a teacher's pet now, would you? <laughs> I guess not. Thanks anyway, Grandpa. It's all right, little Luke. Anytime I can help. <laughs> Wonder if they're using a different Bible now. Solomon's temple was made of giant stones cut by 80,000 stone hewers. The wooden floor was made from fir trees fastened by 50 shekels of gold. You got that? <laughs> Give me the questions. What was the temple made of? It was made of uh, giant hueys. <laughs> giant stones. The hueys cut the stone. Oh, now stop splitting hair. <laughs> I'll read it again. Solomon's temple was made of giant stones cut by 80,000 stone hueys. The wooden floor was made from fire. And the temple was finally completed after seven years of labor. Now, I make it very easy. How many years did it take to complete the temple? Did we go over that before? Chihuahua. I'll give you a hint. The number of years it took to build the temple is... Six. Seven. Why don't you learn how to hint? <laughs> okay. Up to now, I'd say things are going along pretty good, huh? When they made the wooden floors, how did they fasten them? Come on, let's get going. Señor Grandpa, please, no more. I am asking you questions for two hours. I am hoarse from hinting. 
but I just want to be sure I got everything down pat. All right. How many years did it take to build a temple? How many years, huh? Senor Grandpa, what's the use? Yeah, I guess it's kind of hopeless, Pepina. I wish I didn't have to agree with you. Well, thanks anyways for trying to hit. What are you going to do? Yeah, I know one thing I ain't going to do. I ain't going to get up in front of that Sunday school class and look like a god darn fool. Well, the Reverend, he will not be too happy. Well, I ain't no bundle of joy myself. <laughs> Reverend, I got a message that you wanted me to stop by. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about something. You come on up and set yourself down on the settee there. Thank you. I brought along these books that I thought might be helpful in class someday. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. You know, when I said I'd take over the Sunday school class, I clean forgot that Sunday school is on Sunday. <laughs> well, just when did you assume we would have Sunday school? <laughs> well, what I mean is... Uh, Sunday for a Saturday night, you see. <laughs> and what's the problem of Saturday night? Oh, big date, dancing, carousing, and all that. <laughs> oh, I understand. Good. Because I'm going out myself Saturday night. Now, you just take a good, strong cup of coffee first thing in the morning. It'll set you up. Well, see you Sunday. <laughs> but, but just a minute. You know, I might not get in before 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm a go, you know. <laughs> Mr. McCoy, why don't you tell me the real reason you don't want to teach Sunday school? Uh, you think that I ain't smart enough? I know all this stuff. But to hold it in a 67-year-old brain, it, it just won't stick. You don't have to remember it. Everything you need to know is right in those books. Now, you come down Sunday, sit down at the desk, and read a few of those stories. And don't tell me you can't read. <laughs> What's this little Luke tells me about you not going to church? Oh, I just don't feel so put, Luke. <laughs> Guess I get one of them viruses or something. Might be catching. Don't feel like I should ought to mix in crowds or nothing. <laughs> you don't look sick to me, Grandpa. Oh, young Dr. McCoy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Oh, them's the books the Reverend brought over. Books? You? To read to the class. Truth is, Luke, I just ain't got the know-how to handle that Sunday school class. What do you mean you ain't got the know-how? You told me all the Bible stories, didn't you? Yeah, but they seem to tell them different now. Now they got to know how far it is from Joppy to Jerusalem and all about them Hueys and... <laughs> They want facts, Luke. And I just don't know them. Oh. I don't want to get up there and make a fool out of myself. Besides not learning the kids nothing. I'll tell the Reverend you're sick. I better get them kids ready. Little Luke, hurry up and get dressed. They're going to church. Well, if Grandpa doesn't have to go, why do I have to go? Grandpa happens to be sick. Well, if he's sick, so am I. You ain't nothing of the sort. And neither is he. Now, what Grandpa does ain't no business of yours. You hurry up and get dressed. Sunday school's important. Well, if it's so important, why doesn't he go? He's supposed to teach. Look, the reason he don't want to teach is because... Never mind. If you ain't dressed and ready to go in exactly five minutes, there's going to be a lot of trouble here. Well, I don't care. I'm warning you. Having some trouble here? Grandpa, 
If you don't have to go to Sunday school, why do I have to go? Who says I ain't going? Well, gee, are you? Of course I am. I was a little under the weather there for a spell, but I'm all right now. So come on, get ready. Gee, Grandpa, you sure got better fast. Did you take some medicine? I'll take my medicine when I get to church. <laughs> Are. Oh, it's a very big church. I have no idea. Well, Grandpa, we'll, uh, we'll come by this way after services, and then we can all leave by the side door. <laughs> Reminds me, I once saw a picture out in film school. Now, look at this. Well, uh, see you later, Grandpa. Good luck. Good morning, children. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I guess the first thing I do is call the roll. Will everybody that's here raise your hand? <laughs> that's good. <laughs> now, uh, we can wait a spell before we get started. If there's someone who wants to go get a, a drink of water or something. <laughs> Nobody, huh? Well, the uh, lesson this morning is going to be about uh, Solomon's temple. It's going to be real interesting, isn't it? <laughs> now, this here Solomon, he built this temple out of, oh, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> What time do you usually have recess? How about now? <laughs> What's that you got there, son? Nothing. Let me see it. Let me see it. Oh, comic books, eh? You in the habit of reading this kind of stuff in Sunday school? Well, it helps. <laughs> Man killing sharks, eh? You know something, son? This here fella swimming underwater with sharks? Why, that's tame as tiddlywinks compared with what happened to Jonah. <laughs> well, now, that's right. If you're looking for interesting things, then nothing can hold a candle to the Bible. <laughs> this fellow in here, he got himself a spear. When Jonah got tossed in the ocean, he didn't have no spear. He didn't have nothing. And he wasn't swallowed up by no little bitty shark, neither. He was swallowed up by a genuine giant whale, big as his whole room. Just imagine, three whole days, the biggest fish in the world, and Jonah inside him while she's swimming around. But he being swallowed up by the whale was what saved Jonah's life in the end. How? Well, the whale spewed Jonah up on the shore. You see, that kept him from being drowned. <laughs> Covered wagons. <laughs> it's tame as mud compared to Moses' trip to the Promised Land. Why, one time, there he was. The Pharaoh's soldiers just a snapping at his heels when he come to the ocean. Couldn't go one step further, so he turned around. And here comes all the soldiers swarming in on him, just like bugs out of a hard log. <laughs> they had no more chance than a peanut on the railroad track. But did Moses give up? I'll say he didn't. You want to know what he done? Well, you just grab a hold of your chairs here, and I'll tell you what he done. This here young fella, Davy, he picked himself up a stove. And standing not more than 20 feet from him was this, this here big giant. Offering one of them God done 65 cent steaks. <laughs> this big guy's name was Goliath. Besides being big, he was a mean one, too. Why, he looked like he was 20 stories high. <laughs> but Davy never budged an inch. Now, me and you might have hightailed it out of there, but not Davy. No, sir. He wasn't that kind of a fella. He just slipped a stone into his sling, but he had something to go with it. You know what it was? It was a secret weapon. 
He had something more than that little stone. He had right on his side. Now you can't get licked when you got that. But then he took his sling and he started whirling around. Fast, fast, fast. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Reverend. I didn't see you there. May I see you in the corridor, Mr. McCoy? Well, that, that Davy was quite a boy, wasn't he? Well, uh, I guess I didn't work out so good as a teacher. I tried, but, well, I just didn't cut out for it. On the contrary, Mr. McCoy, you've opened a lot of eyes around here. What do you mean, Reverend? Well, perhaps we haven't presented our Bible stories in the right way. Possibly too many facts and not enough, shall we say, of the drama? <laughs> well, I, I just told him the way my pappy done told him to me. And I think that's the best way. I saw the evidence, and it seems conclusive. They did pay attention, didn't they? Speaking for myself, and I'm sure all the parents, we'd, we'd be grateful if you'd take over the Sunday school class permanently. Well, now, Reverend, that's a, a rightly fine honor. I'd be glad to do it. Good. I'm just glad not too many of the parents heard you in there. Why? Well, I've got to give a sermon upstairs. And believe me, you're a tough act to follow. 